Okay, so now that we've collected data, or know how to collect data from rain gauges and uh, measuring snowfall, we're going to talk a little bit about um, how you summarize and analyze precipitation data. So um, we want to analyze and summarize precipitation data because we want to look at climatic patterns and changes over time. Um, and there's a lot of particular reasons why we do this, and I will be talking about that as we go. So first, I'm going to just talk about summarizing and reporting precipitation data. You might know a little bit about that already, since we looked at some of that data in lab last week. Um, but then I'm going to talk about something called a frequency analysis, which is very important to hydrologists. So first, let's look at the summarizing precipitation data. So once you have your data from a recording gauge or a standard gauge, you can average that um, rainfall data and for, for months, for one individual month or months and, and over a year. And so usually when you're summarizing the data, you are just averaging things and reporting them as um, monthly data or um, yearly data. And we can see that here um, that we looked at these uh, climate graphs from last week that this is the average precipitation per month, these blue bars. And you can see this is January, February, March, April. And so you can look at the averages across a year and you can see the pattern that you have more rainfall in the winter and less in the summer and you can see how it coincides with temperature as well. So those are the kinds of information you can summarize from that data. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about is um, how that data is collected over a year's time. And this is appropriate more for stream flow, but I wanted to talk about it here because um, it's appropriate for this week. So annual or monthly rainfall data can be reported for a calendar year, that means from January to December, or for something called a water year. Um, the water year is a 12-month period from October 1st, which is this Thursday, to September 30th. Now this makes sense for hydrologists because that water year coincides with the beginning and end of rainfall. In the winter months, in October, November, December, and um, January and February we get, in our area anyway, most of our rainfall. And then it starts to dissipate as the year goes on up until September and then October it will start again. So um, this is a way to look at the amount of water that's being contributed to streams and to our water supply by looking at the water that is um, coming into the watershed naturally over a 12 month period from October 1st to December 30 to September 30th, which is Wednesday. So um, I just wanted to um, bring that up today because, um, hey, Happy New Year. Um, now we're going to look at, instead of just summarizing things and averaging things, we're going to analyze precipitation data um, using something called a frequency analysis. When you have a precipitation that's been measured over long periods, daily, monthly, yearly, over, but, but over years, you know, you've got, you know, thousands of, thousands of days of data um, over 10 years, um, this can be analyzed for, again, looking at patterns of the amount, the duration, and intensity of certain rainfall events. And hydrologists use this information to understand when or uh, a severe event, well not so much when, but how often severe events occur and the probability that they are going to occur from year to year. And that's important um, because, uh, well, we can use this long-term precipitation data um, that gives us the amount, duration, intensity. Um, we can use it to get a probability of occurrence and a return interval, I didn't include that here, in something called a frequency analysis. By doing a frequency analysis, we can get an idea of 
uh, how often severe events occur. And so, again, I, I was about to talk about this, but why why do they do that? Um, no, darn it. Let, let me keep going with this, the frequency analysis. Now, I, I am talking about a precipitation frequency analysis. And this is the evaluation of precipitation data um, to estimate how frequently events of a certain magnitude will occur. This is the um, definition that I'll want you to know about uh, frequency analysis. Now, I, I quantify qualify this as a precipitation frequency analysis because we can also do frequency analysis for flooding and stream flow. And so um, those are done in the same way, but right now we're just talking about precipitation and that using that precipitation for these frequency analysis. Now let me talk about why why would we do a frequency analysis? Because it informs um, watershed managers about when huge flood events are going to occur, when you're going to get a tense amount of rainfall in your area, um, when you're going to have a high amount of rainfall in your area, because um, you want to plan for that. You want to plan so that roads don't um, uh, fall out or, or, or deteriorate, that um, infrastructure, any other kind of infrastructure, buildings or any kind of industry that's out there, or if you've done some kind of um, land management um, clearing, uh, you want to know for agriculture how much um, rain is going to fall and when you need to pre be prepared for an extreme event that might wash away your crop, or if you've done some clear cutting or cutting in your forest, is that um, uh, clear cut is it um, going to withstand a high storm event? So th those are just things, just a few things you might want to consider as a watershed manager. So you want to plan for these high water flows. You want to plan for high amounts of water too, so you can manage all the resources in your watershed effectively. Before I talk or give you an example, I'm going to give you an example of a frequency analysis. I want to talk about the terminology that we're using here. Um, amount, when I talk about amount, that means the vertical depth of rainfall. That's the what you get from your rain gauge. Um, the duration, you're going to get that from your recording rain gauges, right? The amount of time. You can find um, rainfall over time by using the um, more sophisticated recording rain gauges. So the duration is the length of time of a rainfall event a storm or the amount of rainfall. The intensity is the amount of rainfall divided by that duration or over the time. And so um, you can have rain events that are going to be of different intensity. So those those three things are used in a frequency analysis. And then by um, analyzing those things, we can come up with a return interval. That's the time between events of equal or greater magnitude. So say you had an event and you want to know what's the what's the return interval for something like this to happen um, that's going to exceed that amount of precipitation or that intensity or equal that intensity. And then another thing you look at is the probability of exceedance or this is what comes from the analysis. And this is the probability that a certain magnitude event will be equaled or exceeded. What's the probability of my getting even more rainfall in the future or equal amounts of rainfall from a, a storm? Um, so those are the definitions we'll use and then we're going to now look at an example and we'll use those terminologies in this example and I'm going to show you a website where you can do um, where you can find this information. So we're, this example is a local example. This happened last September where there was a large amount of rainfall that fell around Humboldt Bay. And in particular, um, two inches of rainfall fell in and around Arcata and that fell within one hour. And it caused extensive damage in um, at Humboldt State University where um, you had rain coming through the ceiling, as you can see here, and there was flooding all over Arcata and in other places around um, Humboldt Bay. So this is a big event because there was a lot of rainfall and it came in a short amount of time. 
consider. The amount of rainfall, so if we're looking at our terminology now, the amount of rainfall was two inches and the duration was one hour, so our intensity was two inches per hour. And the reason we had this event was because of a cold front. This is a review of what we talked about last week, where we had cold air coming in and advancing on warm air. And remember, these cold fronts can produce um, high amounts of rainfall in short periods of time and produce a huge thunder clouds and, and thunderstorms. So that's what happened. So that we had the large mass of cold air advancing on warm air and it produced a lot of rainfall. And this um, blue line here is our cold front coming in and this is our warm front. So that is what happened. And now we're going to put ourselves in the role of hydrologists. So we know this event happened, but we want to consider how often does this rainfall intensity occur? In other words, what is the return interval? And what is the possibility of this happening again? What is the probability of exceedance? What's the probability that we're going to have an equal or greater event in the future? In order to do that, we're going to look at um, precipitation frequency data or a server that the National Oceanic Atmospheric Association has. Um, and we're going to be looking at table data. And so we're going to see how we can use that table in particular to find the return interval and our probability of exceedance. And we're going to use our amount and our duration to find that information. So now I'm going to switch here and go to this website, which I will give you the link for. We'll look at that in lab this week because I'm going to have you do this in lab this week. So we're at this site and we'll Click on California so we can get to the information we want and we are going to look for our station and we'll scroll down here and look for uh, Eureka. There it is, Eureka Woodley Island. And there's a bunch of other rain gauges around us that we can also look at and we'll probably do that in the lab. We want to have our um, description be precipitation, precipitation depth. We want the units in English. And then we're doing partial duration because that will give us our hourly um, rainfall. So remember, we had, I'm going to use the little marker here, and recall that we have two inches of rain that fell. It's two inches per hour. And on this table, um, we can find our, let me put this in a different color, our duration over here, which we will look at now. So our duration is one hour, and we are down here is 60 minutes. That's one hour so we can look down here and go to 60 minutes and our amount and remember we're going to be looking for the return interval so this is um, the first thing we go to is our duration but let me just show you where the return intervals are on this table return interval is up here it's the average recurrence interval and that's our return interval. And then we have our amount. So we're going to be looking for the return interval by using our duration and our amount. So I have our duration here at, at 60 minutes. Each of the numbers in these cells here is the amount of precipitation you would find at each one of these return intervals, which are in years. And so we're going to look for a number that's closest to two because there is so much data here that there is a range of um, rainfall depth 
And so if r number 2 falls within that range, then we're good. So I'm looking here at 1.95, which is closest to um, 2. And the range is 1.43 to 2.71. So I know my 2 is within that range. And so to find my return interval, first I went over here and looked at where my amount was. I went to duration and then amount. And now I can go up here and there is my return interval, which is 500 years. Remember, these are all in years. So if there was much less rain falling, it would have been one year or more, and that's per hour. So our two inches per hour um, is a 500 year event. And let's go back and see how we can use that information to find our probability of exceedance. So let's go here. And so from that precipitation frequency server, we looked at a storm that produced two inches of rain in an hour, and we found out that the return interval was 500 years. Now to figure out the probability of exceedance, it's just the reciprocal or one divided by that return interval. So we had 500 years. So I just put P here as our probability equals one over 500 equals 0 0.002, and you multiply that by 100 to get your percent. And you can report it as um, this number as um, make this in red, um, 0 0.002, or as a percent, depending on what you want. So it's only 0.2% probability that this event will happen Again. So what, what does this mean? How do, we, how do we look at this? So this return period of 500 years means that we can expect this type of event statistically to happen every 500 years. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen every 500 years. It's just there's a probability. There's a 0.2% or 0 0.002 probability that this event will be equaled or exceeded. It's pretty low probability that it will be equal or exceeded within the next 500 years. So to continue with what this means, the same event can happen again this year in 10 years or never, because it's a statistical probability. And, and it's, 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 um, it, it is not, um, it, it's not likely and it's, it's a low amount, but it could happen and again. It doesn't mean that once you have a 500 year event, you're not going to see that event again for another 500 years. It's really talking about more of the probability of that event happening. So that return interval and the probability of exceedance can be used to estimate the likelihood of an event, but it can't predict when that event will happen. So to summarize our discussion of frequency analysis, a precipitation frequency analysis is used to predict the likelihood the recurrence of a precipitation event of a certain magnitude. And our example, we use two inches per hour, which is a lot of rain to fall in one hour. And so that was a high magnitude event. And we were looking at what was the likelihood that would occur again. And the information we use in a frequency analysis is the amount, duration, and intensity of the event. And so for our analysis, we didn't punch the numbers. If we were punching the numbers, we would have been looking at years and years of data. We would have ranked that data and done other statistical analysis with it. But instead, we just use the precipitation table or the precipitation frequency server and the table that they produce there. And from that table, we got the return interval and we can calculate from that return interval the probability of occurrence. Um, and I showed you how that can be determined. Um, the return interval is going to be the number of years between that high intensity or event. Um, the probability of exceedance is the percent probability the event will be equaled or exceeded. And the probability, like, the probability of exceedance is found by dividing the return interval into one or taking the reciprocal. 
So um, that is a frequency analysis, and we'll get some practice on that on Wednesday.